So I was just brushing up on some information here about today's episode. It's going to be about horsepower, the power under the hood of the Nintendo Switch. Now, there's not necessarily new information about this, but more like a confirmation about what's going on under there. I haven't really gone in depth with this, so I figured some of you may like this kind of information. And I also picked a fun game to do it with. I recently picked up Fast RMX. I know some of you already knew that I wanted to play this game. I was really interested in it. It's my kind of game where I can pick up and go and, and pause and continue. And it's a lot of fun, visually stunning, super fast. So what better way to celebrate horsepower under the hood than with a game that kind of pushes that horsepower. Today I have a fun day. Um, I'm going to go watch Logan and enjoy myself for a little bit. So um, you get to come with me, hang out, and uh, learn a little bit. So here we go. We've heard it time and time again. Custom Tegra X1. Since the months following up to the Switch, the Power Obsessed have been trying to find out exactly how much power the Nintendo Switch has under the hood. And that, up until recently, has proved to be the case, since Nintendo isn't very transparent about their hardware. Thanks to Tech Insight, we know now exactly nothing has changed. It's just a Tegra X1. Exactly that. Anyways, <laughs> so, like, quick side note. Let me let me focus this. We're waiting for like the sun to go down. You, you can see it's a little bright, and literally everybody has to sit here and wait. They're all sitting and waiting and eating, and I get to play this beautiful thingy. And uh, I'm gonna let Haley play with me, <gasps> and she's gonna be really Yay! excited. <laughs> because I never let her play. No, so I got the Joy-Con with the strap, uh, and we're gonna play um, Fast RMX. The photo of the X1 and the custom Switch X1 are identical when put side by side. So what exactly is custom? According to an NVIDIA statement, the Nintendo Switch's gaming experience is also supported by fully custom software including a revamped physics engine, new libraries, advanced game tools, and libraries. NVIDIA additionally created new gaming APIs to fully harness this performance. The newest API, NVN, was built specifically to bring lightweight, fast gaming to the masses. This all makes sense especially when taking from a previous NVIDIA statement of using 500 man hours on the Nintendo Switch custom SOC. Now physically, this isn't any different from the stock X1, but it's the software end that makes this X1 different from the stock X1. This isn't running Android and it's built specifically to meet the tasks at hand demanded by Switch. It also could have certain parts of the hardware switched off that aren't needed to reserve battery life, like any camera support the chip has. The Nintendo Switch doesn't have one, so shut it down. The result is an efficient SOC that runs at 307.2 MHz in mobile mode and 768 MHz dock. Although this is underclocked from the original clock speed of 1 GHz for the stock Tegra X1, it outperforms the NVIDIA Shield. When looking at the Tomb Raider reboot port running on the NVIDIA Shield, it barely runs at 720p 30 frames a second. Then the narrative changes when you look at the Nintendo Switch running fast RMX at 720p 60 frames a second undocked. Double the performance with one third of the power. Then it shames the stock X1 when docked pushing it to 1080p 60 frames a second. The partnership between Nintendo and Nvidia really shines here. They've been able to take hardware like the Tegra X1 and push it past what it was originally intended to do. The 500 man hours from Nvidia, the several hundred hours from Nintendo, and all the input that game developers have had on the Switch has really made the Switch. This goes to show how much Nintendo has learned from their past mistakes and their willingness to make sure that it doesn't happen again. I also think it's important to note that recently it's come out that Capcom has had a big say 
and how much memory is in the Nintendo Switch. So if you think there was a little bit of memory in it now, think about it from a year ago. It looks like they were actually concerned about how much this console costs as if it doesn't cost enough now. So think about it. The console probably could have been 249 had they cut corners, but some developers, one like Capcom, have actually wanted them to up it. So think about that. We may have saved some money, but games may have not run as smooth as the, it, it does now. So do you think it's worth it? I think so. An extra 50 bucks, smoother gameplay, more abilities, no problem. Yeah, I'm a little more broke, but hey. Anyways, thanks for stopping by for another show, and I'll catch you in the next one.